Flat Earth Truth is a channel that has been propagating the Flat Earth Theory for some time. Run by a Terry R. Iker, he spends a lot of his time looking at the Flat Earth Gleason map like this one here. Well today he's going to use it to take us deep inside the rabbit hole. Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's Flat Earth Friday, Be Wearables. Be Wearables, beware plus wearables, make shirts and accessories which celebrate a healthy sense of the ridiculous. If you squint and tilt your head a bit, you'll discover that life is really funny. Each Be Wearables design is based on a real sign that is oddly funny. Be Wearables want you to laugh and enjoy the ridiculousness of this world. The sign which first inspired them was this one. They found it in 1997 in Portugal by the River Teo. I suppose Portugal has a problem with cars trying to drive across the river. They thought it was hysterically funny, photographed it and kept it. Now they make shirts inspired by the signs that they've collected. They have collected signs from all over the world, like this one here, for example. This one was on a shuttle bus in China near Xi'an, home of the Terracotta Warriors. It's funny because what exactly is that coming off the head? It was a standard shuttle bus. There were no rotating knives. Personally, I hit my head a lot because I'm tall and my wife moans at me when I do it, believe it or not. Double pain. Wearing this allows me to duck around rotating knife shuttle buses. Every sign really does have a story. So go to bewearables.co slash simandan for links to Amazon sites across the world. And for this month only, you can get 15% off the list price. Right, back to the latest video where Terry Iker wants to take us deep inside the rabbit hole. Here we go. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Good evening, everyone. I have a special video for you guys today, and this video is going to show you how uh, they hide the ice wall from the tourists who actually take a tour to supposedly Antarctica. Okay, so Terry actually accepts that people really do go to Antarctica. That's a fair start. And there's only two tour routes for, from two different countries. And uh, you're going to be amazed. Once I went to the original flat earth map from 1892, it was easy to figure out how they do it. I'm going to show you guys. Enjoy the video. So of course Terry is talking about the Gleason map here. And in terms of how to get to Antarctica, the most common method is to fly to the South Shetland Islands from either Chile or Argentina and then get a boat to the peninsula. Okay, here we have the flight and cruise route for a tour to Antarctica from Planet Janet Travels. Uh, let me zoom in on that a uh, little better where you guys can see it. Um, there we go. Okay. Now, let's switch over to this map of the route so you can see the names. It leaves out of Cape Horn, uh, goes past the South Shetland Islands along the Antarctic tail, and then back up. Just for clarity here, the first image that Terry showed was the flight then ship option I just mentioned. The second image here he showed was just a cruise only option from Southern Chile. Now this right here would be the South Shetland Islands on Google Maps. And then of course, uh, there's the little tail of Antarctica. Terry really is up with his geographical terms, isn't he? That section is called the Antarctic Peninsula or the Palmer Peninsula. Uh, there's a panned out view for you guys. See it a little better. But pay attention to the tail of that uh, Antarctica. It's going to be really important in, in a minute. Here, here's another uh, view of the route. See how it goes along the edge of that tail and then they turn around and they go back. That's because it's the safest way to go and see Antarctica. There's no need to go all the way to the South Pole. If you want to visit Antarctica with the least amount of risk, then this is the way to do it. Okay, now here's where things get interesting. Let's look at the 1892 uh, flat Earth map. Now, this right here is South America. So let's zoom in here where you guys can see this. Now here's the route. There's Cape Horn, where they leave from. And as you can see right down below that, 
you have the South Shetland Islands. Not really a surprise, the flat earth map has to incorporate everything on the globe, so... Okay, and then you have the ice wall, of course. But notice this little tip, little tail right here. Well, that's the same tail that you see on the continent Antarctica that they show you on the globe, which is pretty slick. But anyways, this little part right here, this is the little area that they travel along and call it the Antarctica, which is only a tiny little bit. So the route goes this way. It goes through the Shetland Islands, uh, comes down through here, past these little islands, then turns around and goes back to Cape Horn. And if you'll notice on this map how the ice wall looks, well, down here where they supposedly tour at, this is the only part of the little ice wall that sticks out. Yes, because this is where the peninsula is located. It's not really groundbreaking stuff, is it? In that area. So you wouldn't, you'd be stationed there working or take a tour and you would never really see the ice wall. You only see that little piece of it that sticks out because of the rest of Antarctica is off limits. Well, it's not, is it? There's scientists that live at the South Pole for almost half a year. And then of course, there's the additional cruise route from New Zealand. Now let's have a look at the only other tour that you can take to Antarctica, which goes from South uh, New Zealand to and back to Tasmania. Yes, and you can see that this is another cruise. Now notice, I want you to pay attention to that little Stewart Island there as you leave New Zealand. Notice they go down here to what they call Commonwealth Bay, and then they cruise along a little bit, turn around and go back to Tasmania. Okay, now let's have a look at that route on the flat earth map. Here we have uh, South New Zealand. And notice right there on the other side of it, you see that little Stewart Island um, that I was telling you guys to look at on the uh, Google map. Okay, so the route leaves here, goes down here, which on this flat earth map, it says Disappointment Bay. Remember on the Google Earth map, it says uh, Commonwealth Bay. Sounds like the perfect place for all you flat earthers when you finally realize that the earth is spherical. And then they go back, return to Tasmania. So anyways, like I said, they leave here, go along this little bitty tiny bulge that sticks out from the ice wall called Commonwealth Bay, Disappointment Bay, whatever. Notice it's the only part in the ice wall except for the other part that I showed you that bulges out away from the ice wall. Well, let's have a look, shall we? There's here, and here, and here, and here. So anyways, they go down through here, cruise along a little bit, and then return back to Tasmania. That way you never see the ice wall. You only see that little bulge of it that's sticking out there out of this whole map. Most of this wall is cut out perfectly all the way around except for those two little spots. And they both bulge out and then they're at the exact same spot at the bottom of both of those countries, just like it shows you on uh, Google Maps. I'm not really sure why this is a problem, Terry. It's not proof, it's just an observation of sorts. Now, as you can see, it's really, really simple how they uh, pull it off. Uh, making you believe that Antarctica is a continent when it's not. That's why it's called the Antarctic Circle, because it's an ice wall, a circled ice wall. No, it's because it's a major circle of latitude, just like the Arctic Circle and the equator and the tropics. All the way around the whole world. And I've had a lot of people say, well, I've had friends that worked there and they didn't see any ice wall. Well, or were stationed there actually. And I'm sure they were stationed there but they were only stationed in those two little bitty areas that I just showed you. No, they weren't. This is the view from the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. Where's the water, Terry? Where's the coast? And that's also the only two little areas that you could take a tour to. And uh, the rest of, and I say this in quote when I say Antarctica, is restricted, off limits to the public, to anybody. And that's due to the 1958 Antarctic Treaty. That's because they have something to hide. They know if you went anywhere other than those two spots, you would realize that you're on an ice wall. That's not what the treaty says, which means you haven't read the treaty. And uh, 
even in a lot of flat earthers, a lot of my friends of mine are always wondered, well, how do they pull it off? How, how, do they, how do people not know? And that's exactly how, the way that I just showed you. What, pointing out that a flat earth map has copied features from the globe? That's not proof. And uh, just takes a little bit of research, especially if you have the flat earth map. Anyways, hope that helped you guys out. Thanks for watching and God bless. Total nonsense. Well, there we go. A very, very poor showing there from Terry R. Iker. Even for Flat Earther standards, that was very poor. So for now, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. There will be more Terry R. Iker videos coming. I'm sure of that. Thank you very much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, then please do consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, as I always say, we're getting close to that half a million subscribers. I cannot wait to hit it. We're gonna have a massive celebration. Uh, and of course, if you really en enjoyed it, then hit that like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank Bewearables for sponsoring today. Remember, go to bewearables.co slash Simandan to get links. And this month only, you can get 15% off the list price. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday for more Facebook science. See you then.